So um, let's go now to uh, Mr. Mattia Onori. Um, with this, with this accent, like Mattia Onori, more or less. So this is your mic. Um, whatever you want. <laughs> yes. So. Mattia Nori is uh, met for EPM Resource and Achievement of Golf of uh, Corigliano. 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 Yes. Um, good morning, everybody. I am uh, Matteo Nori, the GIS and database expert of Amici della Terra. My presentation is called Results and Achievements in the Golf of Corigliano. Actually, we are going to see the achievements that we obtained in the implementation phases of our project in the ecosystem context analysis, the technical work, system cause effect analysis, and finishing with the management protocols. Concerning the ecosystem context analysis, we are going to see how we defined the spatial boundaries of our project area, as well as the system diagram, which is a set of ecosystem components, both environmental and socioeconomics, that led us to the technical work which basically is the part that I uh, concentrated my effort in during the three years of project, and basically is the implementation of the software that uh, previously Dr. Marco Falcetta spoke about. Then we moved to the, we will move to the system cause effect analysis with uh, a technical report and informative report analysis that we performed during our project area, and which uh, were important in order to define the management protocols. As you can see from the, from the slide, uh, you already know that management protocols in our project area are about agriculture and tourism. From the um, arrows that you can see in the bottom of our uh, presentation, um, I mean, the two important things that I want to underline to you is that uh, this was a participatory process with the engagement of the stakeholders of our area. And from the phase number two, which is the phase that we addressed in the software. We use, uh, we use the outputs from the store software, so basically charts and maps as I showed in the pre previous uh, presentation, in order to implement the phase number three and four. Speaking about the first phase, so <clears throat> where the ecosystem-based management has been applied in our project area? In the two reserves, Tarsia Lake and mouth of Crafty River, which are located in the south of Italy, in Calabria, Cosenza province, which is also the biggest and most populated in our area, in, in, um, in the region. And these two reserves, Tars Tarsia Lake and Mouth of Crater River, has been established, have been established in 1990 and still managed by Amici della Terra. They are also special areas of conservation according to the Natura 2000 framework. The next question we did to ourselves was, is it enough to apply ecosystem-based management methodology within just the two protected areas? Of course, management is, already, is possible and already in place. You have to consider that there is a park authority in our uh, natural reserves. And it's also highly regulated by the, of course, the framework, not just uh, Natura 2000, but national, international, and uh, regional framework. And you have also to consider the fact that the pressures coming from within the areas are minimal. There is no anthropogenic pressures. So we arrived to the conclusion that maybe working just within these areas is not enough. It's not enough because these areas are not isolated, but they are open to external influences. And in generally speaking about ecosystem-based management, you have to consider all the ecosystem components that determine the status of an ecosystem. Also the one that comes from outside. So the conclusion is that it was not possible to apply the ecosystem-based management without considering what was outside the reserves. And this is why we went from the natural reserves, 6.4 square kilometers, to something bigger, which is an extended area of, of around 800, 900 square kilometers which is approximately uh, 150 times bigger and includes 10 municipalities with a total of 120,000 inhabitants. We, we, so we passed also from zero, let's say, people to uh, a bigger amount. Among these municipalities, Cassano Leone and Corigliano Rossano, that are more or less in the middle of, the, of this uh, map, 
are also the most important and the biggest uh, municipalities and uh, also the, let's say, the closest stakeholders that uh, um, we had during the three years project. But why we choose specifically this project area? For three reasons. The first one, geomor geomorphological uniqueness. Uh, this is an alluvial plain that is formed from uh, the Crater River uh, uh, sediments and its uh, tributaries sediments. The second reason is that we have an uniqueness also in the functionality of the area and uh, it has a widespread agricultural activity as you can see from the land um, cover map and the orange uh, are more or less the citrus growth and olives growth which is the most uh, important uh, production in terms of agriculture in our project area and uh, the overall agricultural land covered the 65% of the, of the area which is a lot we can say that where, is, where there isn't any agricultural area, we have tourist accommodance facilities. Uh, this is another very important economic sector. As you can see from the, from the slide, it's concentrated mainly along the coast. And also we have a spatial and a temporal concentration during the summer season. Uh, the blue dots represent the 20, 27,000 hotel beds. That is a number, of course, which is uh, very big for our project area and uh, it doesn't even consider the number of beds in the second houses, which is a very important phenomenon in the area. So again, agriculture and tourism are the human activities that generate the greatest pressure on the reserves. So expanding the implementation of ecosystem-based management in a bigger area increases the complexity, of course, for us. In terms of ecosystem complexity, we have a, a bigger number of uh, uh, components environmental to, to address as well as new socioeconomic components address to address and um, considering the the bigger number of components we have many more connection linking them the complexity has been increased also in the data gathering process uh, of course to to have a more um, um, let's say implemented system that uh, define and describe all the components we need more data and um, pose the problem also on the data management because we need uh, to have a system, as uh, was shown before, that uh, rapidly and effectively assess the, the, um, the ecosystem dynamics. So we don't want to overload the system with data that are unnecessary. The last problem is that, uh, of course, with a, with a smaller area, we have just one uh, uh, stakeholder, which is the park authority, which is, of course, Amici della Terra. But with a bigger area, we have a different stakeholders, uh, different type also of stakeholders, uh, regional institute, agencies, municipalities, association, local communities. Uh, the second part of the ecosystem context analysis is about the system diagram definition. It's again a participatory process uh, that involves the stakeholders for the description of the ecosystem uh, uh, components. We have divided the components into matrices an environmental matrix and a socioeconomic matrix. You can see that among the socioeconomic matrix, we have also the agriculture and the tourism. These components were arranged, especially with the boxes and arrows, to, to create the system diagram. That was already shown. This is the Italian, actually, system diagram. And again, you can append information, quantitative information, to any item of the system diagram. Could be an arrow, or a box, or a subcomponent. About the second phase of the implementation, a technical work, uh, this is an overflow of the procedures that we uh, addressed during the, during the three years project. Starting from the system diagram that I sh just showed you, we defined a set of indicators and uh, actually we started gathering the data, which is uh, something on which I uh, worked, uh, if, um, let's say, the most among all the phases of the project in order to feed the software ISP. This was important because uh, starting from the software, the outputs of the software, uh, it was possible to perform also the system cause effect analysis, which is the phase number three. We can speak about technical achievements concerning technical work uh, and specifically about how and with what the system was implemented. 
uh, concerning the how uh, for the implementation of the system, uh, two objectives have been pursued. The first one is sustainability, and the second one is efficiency. About sustainability, we can say that we have a self-sustaining, almost self-sustaining platform that gather the inputs of the stakeholders in terms of data provision. But already, uh, the system diagram was a product of the stakeholders. The second reason why we speak about sustainability is the fact that we didn't weigh down the system with unnecessary data, just like I said before. The tenth reason is that we create, or, may, or better say, field a data repository tool inside the, the, the software, which is called Data Management Toolbox, with all the metadata and the procedure to modify and update the data in the future. Speaking about efficiency, let's say that we adapt all the work uh, to, to, be, to be effective and to, be, and to create a procedure, a methodology that would lead us to an effective and fast assessment of the ecosystem. So basically we adapted the nomenclature of the data that we gather to the official uh, institution data that are provided and we gave the priority to the data allowing uh, an immediate assessment of the ecosystem. This was actually achieved uh, working very hard on the implementation of charts and map inside the system. Uh, speaking about the what, uh, of course we needed data to, to fill the system and the system diagram. We gave the priority to the stakeholders. We tried to reach the stakeholders to, to, to make them uh, give us the information that we needed. But we also, at least at the beginning, uh, tried to, to, to gather, to retrieve this data from online repositories. We actually worked on this data at Excel level, database level, and inside the software level. We appended the information to the components of the environmental and socioeconomic uh, matrices. And uh, today, uh, at today, we have a system with 87 indicators, environmental and socioeconomic indicators, and that would also add official, because they are, let's say, suggested by the international rules, and they are supported by 16 GIS vectors. Speaking about uh, the phase number three, which is the system cost effect analysis, this is again uh, the, the exploded, let's say, um, workflow that we addressed during this phase. Uh, we identified the, the tourism and the agriculture as the main uh, driver that generate pressure in our area. We studied the legislative framework and we performed the quantitative analysis in order to obtain a technical report. This is a very concept, a simple conceptual diagram, of course it's much more uh, complicated and complex than this that uh, define our idea be be behind the system cost effect analysis concerning uh, the tourism uh, sector. Uh, we think that the tourism, alongside of course other activities just like uh, uh, enterprises or uh, human presence, just like demography, generate load in the worst water treatment plants that also generate a load in coastal marine waters in terms, in terms of batting water quality. So what we actually did, this is just an example of our system cause effect analysis. We performed a quantitative analysis by selecting some of the 87 indicators that we implemented within the system. And these indicators would help us assessing the components that are involved in the, in the analysis. So for tourism, we have a number of arrivals, number of presences, intensity, and many others. For the waste waters, we tried to assess the general um, state of the wastewater treatment plants. And uh, for coastal marine waters, we try to, let's say, to, um, to stick with the rules of the, of the European directi directives concerning uh, the values for Enterococcus and E. coli. Again, we studied the European uh, directives and uh, we put all these analysis in the report. Same thing has been done for agriculture, of course, uh, but with a different uh, uh, let's say, uh, reasoning and folk behind, we think and we saw with the outputs of the ISP that agriculture generate pressure on the groundwater and surface water mostly in terms of pollution, pesticides, fertilizers, in terms of uh, water exploitation, in terms of uh, salt water intru intrusion. Again, in, during the instant cost-effect analysis process that we performed with uh, Dr. Francesca Pella, 
uh, we again selected a set of indicators within our uh, system, both for agriculture, for, both for uh, water quality. We studied the European directives and we reached a result in the system cost effect analysis. I'm not going into detail because it would be, let's say, time consuming. But um, the, the most important thing is that the system cost effect analysis was needed, was very important in order to, to reach and to implement the phase number four, which is the management protocols I, um, identification. This is uh, more or less the, the workflow that we follow, again, starting from the tourism and the agriculture. We create an informative report, which is just a summary of the system cost effect analysis report. And this report, we identified the measures that uh, we needed to, let's say, um, address the pressure on the ecosystem. We shared this document with the stakeholder, which gave us their official endorsement. And we will see this a very important uh, result and achievement for our project area. All this work that we did, it was a preparatory, preparatory work for the management protocols. At first sight, it, it was also my concern when I was working on that. I would say, why would, would, would we need a protocol in our project area? I mean, we have already a legislative framework at regional, national, and European level. And this uh, framework already address the human activities such as tourism and agriculture. Monitoring protocol, like we already have the guidelines and the procedures to collect the data. And also the institutions that should or are in charge to collect the data are already identified. So why are these protocols still needed in our project area? for two main reasons. Again, there is a framework, but there is no a framework for collaboration between the stakeholders. So for this reason, and we are here like actually for this reason, there is a lack of integrated management measures. Second reason, monitoring protocols. Of course, there are frameworks for, to collect the data, but data sometimes are not available, or they are available, but in a special and temporary resolution that for us is not enough or when available, they are in separate data repositories that uh, are not making the work to cross them and to make the analysis over the ecosystem. So uh, for us, performing something uh, that was close to a monitoring protocol was not an option for three reasons. The first one is obvious, the area is very big. The second one is that we needed to cover many gaps, both for tourism and agriculture. The third, the third reason is that, again, I told this in the previous slide, the institution in charge of collecting data already existed. Just to make an example, we needed data, more detailed data for the wastewater treatment plants. We cannot physically go inside and retrieve information about that. We would be arrested. So we adapted a, st a strategy at political level. This informative report that we created, that I talked to you about before, it's a qualitative assessment of tourism and agricultural pressures, and we also set a list of management measures for the mitigation of these pressures. We shared this document with the stakeholders of the project area. This is a very simple structure of, the, of what we did in this document, and all the resulting from this document are going into the protocols. So we have pressures, uh, we have goals, we set the tools to solve the pressures. This is just a little example of what we did. For example, for tourism, uh, one of the pressures that we identified is excessive load on the wastewater treatment system that caused problems, of course, on the quality of, uh, of, the, of the water. And we want, as a goal, to improve the batting water quality in terms of the Enterococcus and E. coli values. And we set also a list of intervention to do so. Among them, we can uh, quote, for example, the improvement with water treatment plants. We want to, sense, to make a census of the legal dumpings. We want to clean the river banks. Same things has been done for the agriculture. One of the pressure that we identified is the chemical pollution and water eutrophication uh, phenomena. And the goal is to reduce the use of chemical in agriculture. Uh, we, both, uh, we already spoke about uh, fertilizer and, and um, uh, pesticides. 
and uh, we define a set of actions to reach our goal. At the end of this process, with both the system cost effect analysis and the, the, the informative report, we received from the stakeholders 12 official letters of endorsement, nine from uh, stakeholders that are within our project area, three from stakeholders that are out. What are these letters saying? First of all, they recognize the importance of the ecosystem methodology, ecosystem-based management methodology that is the first time that has been applied in our project area. They recognize the good level of implementation of the software in terms of data and visualization of charts and maps. They will give their political and technical support to implement the management measures that we identified in the document. And also, they commit to give us the data to continue, um, to continue the, the, the process that we started by identifying the, the IBM protocols. Uh, last but not least, uh, um, the forum, where this is a speech that will be addressed in the afternoon uh, with the other presentation, so I'm not going into detail with that, but just know that is a platform where the stakeholders coming from the inside of the, the, the project, met for IBM, but also from that side, cooperate to implement the ecosystem-based management methodology. Uh, speaking of, uh, uh, just about the project uh, area stakeholders, uh, uh, so we address the first, first point. Speaking about the non-project area stakeholders, uh, we can say that they both, uh, they are not, they're both not because they are not two, but they all uh, um, joined the forum officially, and they also open to the possibility to implement the same methodology with the same tools in other areas in Italy. So this is just a little image to show you how was the, the implementation at the beginning of the project. As Amici della Terra, we will try to go to the single stakeholders that were not talking to each other to, to gather the information, the data, the support, but it was sometimes a very difficult and hard task. Most of the data that at the beginning we would retrieve were from the online bank data repositories. Afterwards, with the protocols and also with endorsement of the stakeholders, we have a round table where all the stakeholders that officially, let's say, joined the, the ship, let's say like this, uh, collaborate together and with us in the frame of the forum in order to give us the information needed to implement and uh, effecti effectively um, do the measures that we identified and so the protocols. So this is just a little resume of the results and achievements of the project for the Italian part. Again, the first time that in our project area, something like an ecosystem-based management methodology is implemented. We have a system that is already uh, implemented and organized with data that is uh, useful for the analysis of the ecosystem and uh, that led us already, as I said before, to the system cause effect analysis. I said integrated, which is uh, an addition to the official name of the, uh, let's say, of the phase, because uh, actually we are taking into account all the ecosystem dynamics of the uh, project area. Stakeholder endorsement, again, this is probably the most important achievement of our project area and also uh, ecosystem-based management protocols, which I didn't address much in this presentation because will be addressed later. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions, please? Yes, we have our first question. Perfect. I love the mic. So, uh, thank you for the presentation. It was thank you. It was really very clear, and uh, I enjoyed uh, all the presentation. So I, I do have a question regarding this system. W what was the main constraint you faced when you built your system? That's the first question. And the second question, um, how will the system be maintained after the project? Uh, so I start from the end. I start, uh, first of all, thank you for your questions. And I start from the end. Uh, actually, 
of course, I leave this question to, to the people in charge to, to answer this question. Let's say that uh, my job, particularly, finishes with the implementation of the system. So I cannot answer to you this. I don't have the, let's say, the, I don't have the role to answer this. Uh, speaking about the first uh, question, I would say that the, the biggest difficulty, it was uh, uh, the data gathering process. It was a, a very complex uh, situation for two reasons. The first reason is that, as I said, we have the institutions, we have the framework that define the rules for data collecting procedures, for data publishing procedures. But I can make you an example. For example, there are um, uh, 80, more than 80 points in our monitoring points uh, for uh, the, um, the salinity of water in our project area. And all of, them, all of them are empty. You see the map of the Italy. For all the Italy, the points are with the data. Just for Calabria, the region where the, our project area are, the points are without data. This is, a, let's say, the biggest problem that we, that we faced. Another reason is that we tried to give the priority to the stakeholder to retrieve the data. And this is, was already, <laughs> let's say, addressed during the presentation. It was a problem because they sometimes are jealous of their information and data and not always willing to share the information. So hopefully, again, since they gave their, their official endorsement with the official letters, I hope that in the future, but it's already happening, they will continue to, to share their information with us. I hope that I answer your question. Not the first one, because maybe our project manager, Donovan Baldassari, can... We have another question. Yeah. Thank you, Matthew, for the presentation. Thank you. Uh, I just have one question regarding the uh, factors that pose uh, a pressure on uh, the system. I mean, yes. you consider in your... Uh, system, the tourism and the agriculture. What about possible other factors like industries, for example, if there is in the area? So uh, thank you for your question, Har. Um, the first reason is that, that we that we faced, uh, the first, let's say, topic that we faced in our uh, implementation of the system is that uh, we needed to identify, of course, the main topics of, uh, of pressures in our project area. It, the reason is uh, very simple. It's a matter of time, it's a matter of uh, uh, availability of uh, information and data that are sometimes, as I said uh, uh, just now, are not available. So, of course, we know that there are many other also uh, pressures in our project area, even though from the out outputs for, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the software, we didn't see any big risk, no, at least not compared to what we assessed. And uh, I would say that these are the two main reasons. So the fact that there was actually no time to perform a very detailed analysis of all the components of the system diagram, of course we did, but we uh, focused our attention just on the two, these two main components, tourism and agriculture. And the second reason is uh, data viability. Again, I said we have uh, 87 indicators in our project area. They are divided by the ecosystem uh, environmental metrics and the socioeconomic metrics, but still they are not enough in our, uh, let's say, um, understanding of the ecosystem to implement uh, a, a real, complete, and overall cost-effect analysis over the project area, also because it's very big. So you have to know many things to, to assess everything. Grazie. Many other questions? Thank you. No more questions? No more. Thank you very much, Matteo Onore.